Tech Talk. I'm your host, Sean Spicer, Head of Marketing and Sales here at Agile IT. Uh, this week, I'm joined by David Branscombe, Microsoft Partner Technical Architect. If you've been watching Tech Talks for a while, you'll know uh, David from the excellent uh, Compliance in Teams Tech Talk that we refer to frequently. Um, how are you doing today, David? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. All right, so today we're going to be talking about Office 365 Pro Plus, um, and I'm just going to skip the preamble here, like I usually try to, and go ahead and make you panelist, David, and presenter. There we go. I've just handed that over. Um, so I've done a little bit of research on the different licensing, and Pro Plus is kind of an interesting beast if you're used to primarily working in E3 and E5. There we go. Gotcha. Yes, yeah, it, it, it is a, a little bit different uh, when it comes to licensing. Um, I'm assuming you can see what's going on down at the bottom of my screen with the dictation that's uh, taking Ooh, place. Look at that. So that is uh, one of the features of Office 365 Pro Plus that uh, I'll, I'll talk to you about. Um, but that's one of the, the interesting things. This is actually built into PowerPoint. So uh, kind of a neat, neat little product. Um, Really, the, the, the key to what we're going to be talking about and, and the key to this discussion is um, a lot of customers feel like Office 2010 and Windows 7 are good enough to do what they need to do. And um, that really just isn't true anymore. Uh, there's, there's going to be some uh, things that I'll show you that are simply impossible to do with Office 2010 and impossible to do with Windows 7. And once you realize that they're available to be done in those uh, in, in Office 365 and in Windows 10, uh, you'll, you'll wonder how you got along without them. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's move on here. So the first thing to um, be aware of is that Windows 7 and Office 2010 are reaching the end of support next year. So Windows 7 uh, hits first on January 14th and Office 2010 on October 13th. Um, so, so the thing to, to remember here is what that means is that there aren't going to be any security updates um, for Office after October 20, uh, 2020. Now with Windows 7, you can get um, an extended support um, package, but um, that does come with a significant cost. And uh, really what we're focusing on here is is the office uh, situation. And, and so if there are office vulnerabilities that are discovered in Office 2010 after October of next year, um, the odds are that it won't get fixed and uh, you don't have the option for that extended security update with Office 2010. So so that's kind of the the urgency part of it. And uh, what we really want to focus on is, you know, what's what's the next step? Uh, how do we how do we fix this problem? And you can't see it behind the captioning there, um, but that's uh, a picture of Office 2010, the logo. But um, what is it we need to do? So so the recommended path is to move directly over to Office 365 Professional Plus, um, and then as a uh, alternative, if if that's completely undoable. Um, up, upgrade to Office 2019. So those are two separate uh, packages. They have um, uh, very similar functionality in many ways. Um, you know, the, 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 the same kind of core products are included in the, uh, in the, in the two suites, but there is a difference, right? So, so you could just upgrade to Office 2019. Let me turn off the, uh, uh, the subtitle so that you can see these slides a little better. Those were really cool. Um, yeah, yeah, it's kind of fun. Um, so, so if you get the uh, Office 2019, which is what's uh, uh, described here as Office Perpetual, um, you have a static set of features. And this is what we've deployed uh, for years and years and years. We, we deploy a package, we roll out a, a service pack, we roll out hot fixes and stuff like that. Um, it's a static set of features, and that's okay. Um, it's also limited to one PC uh, as, as far as licensing is concerned. When you do Office 365 Pro Plus, you've got a lot more capabilities. For one thing, you're licensed per user, which means 
um, an individual user can uh, have Office 365 Pro Plus, uh, the applications installed on multiple, uh, for example, laptops. Um, but like in my case, I have Office 365 Pro Plus installed on an iPhone, on an iPad, on an Android device. Um, you know, you can have uh, up to up to five mobile devices with Office 365 Pro Plus, the uh, uh, the, the web-based version or or, or the uh, Pro Plus version, I guess is the best way to put it. The, the second aspect of this that's interesting is that it's always up to date. So every time you start up your Office 365 Pro Plus, it's, it's going to do a check for updates and make sure that you're running the, the most current code and have the most current features. So, uh, and, and have the most uh, current security uh, updates. So you don't have to worry as an IT admin necessarily about uh, rolling out these things uh, to your end users. Now, if that is something that you want to do, like if, if you're in a medical um, environment and you need to control which updates go out to your end users, that is possible as well. Um, but in, in some organizations, uh, that's not a requirement. And so they can just let users update that they've uh, got on their machines. But, but really, the, the part that really shines is the, the stuff down here, the real-time collaboration um, and the AI-powered creativity. These are some really, really interesting uh, capabilities, and, and I'm going to talk about those and, and, and show just a few of these. These are not things that take a ton of, of technical know-how to leverage. Um, they're, they're just uh, very easy to use in, in many cases, and... Uh, provide some real great value for uh, a lot of organizations. So um, how do you get there? There's a lot of tools that Microsoft has. Uh, we've got an Office Readiness Toolkit. Um, you've got uh, your Windows Analytics. This is to help you upgrade uh, your operating system. So it's going to take a look at, at things like you know the hardware that you're running on. Um, uh, you, you can manage the compliance of the upgrades, making sure that they're uh, configured a certain way, what's the device health. Um, one of the things that we often hear from customers is, yeah, but my apps on Windows 7, they're, they're not going to work on Windows 10. Um, so, so my first answer to that is probably they will. Um, but, but in the unlikely event that uh, you, you do have an app that uh, you, you have found does not work in Windows 10, we have the Desktop App Assure uh, service from FastTrack. So FastTrack is a service provided by Microsoft. It's, it's free. Um, and, and what we'll do is take a look at the applications that, uh, that you're uh, uh, having issues with. And we'll work with you to make sure that uh, those applications can be ported over to Windows 10 and function correctly. And a note here, David, and we are FastTrack partners. Um, we're fast track ready partners, and as of just last week, we are now fast track referral ready partners. Which means even if you go to Microsoft, there's a chance they're going to send you over to us now. Um, so if you need help with uh, Aperture or any sort of things with fast track, uh, feel free to reach out to us, and we'll take care of you. That is great to hear. That's great to hear. I'm glad. All right. So um, and then that takes us to the question of is Office 2010 good enough? And and, and so what I'm going to do is show you. Uh, a couple applications, uh, a couple capabilities in uh, both Windows and in Office um, 365 that will uh, really convince you that uh, you know, these are things that absolutely positively cannot be done on Windows 7, cannot be done on Office 2010, uh, but they're really, really neat things to, to be able to do. So let's take a, let's take a look. <clears throat> All right, let me move this uh, PowerPoint off to the side. And the first thing I'm going to do is I've got an Android device here that is running Office 365 Pro Plus. <clears throat> and let's say I'm on a train and I've been given uh, a set of documents, right? I'm, I'm, I'm working on the train and I don't have my laptop. I don't have anything but my phone. Um, and on this document, um, they've taken uh, a table and they've handed it to me. And I need to insert this into an Excel spreadsheet. <clears throat> so 
uh, can I do this from a mobile device? So first thing I'm going to do is open up Excel. And I'm just going to open this blank workbook. Oops, it's not blank. <laughs> All right, let's, let's get a blank one. Okay, so blank workbook. <clears throat> now, what I'm gonna do is down here at the, uh, if, if you go down to the bottom of my screen, uh, of, of the phone screen, you see a light bulb. And just to the left of that light bulb is a little uh, table. And in the lower uh, right corner of that table is a camera. So I'm gonna click on that. And what this does is activates the camera on my phone. Now, here is the table that I have. And what it's doing right now is trying to figure out you know, what the boundaries are of the table. It takes just a minute for it to, to find the entire table. Okay, so it's got the entire table. And now I click the little uh, check mark there. And watch what it does. It's gonna take that picture and convert the data into a table in Excel. So I go up to the top and I click insert. It says there's two items that there's a question about. They insert anyway. And there it is. So I've got the table. Um, I can work on this table. I can work on it just like I would with any Power uh, uh, Excel spreadsheet. And uh, I'm working on this on my phone. And all I had to do was take a picture. So really cool stuff that's uh, uh, able to be done there in uh, the mobile version of Office 365 Pro Plus. Very cool. Now, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and, and, and easy, right? I mean, it didn't, it, you, you have to take a little bit of time to get the... Um, the camera situated right but otherwise it's pretty easy now what i'm going to do is uh, while we're on the subject of cameras <clears throat> so what i've got here is i've got a, a photograph so i'm getting a little bit of echo sir. um i'm not hearing any um let me go ahead and mute my mic okay there we go so um so what I've got here is an image of a picture that was taken. So if I preview this, um, this is just a, a basic drawing, right? Of uh, a couple things that uh, you might see on a, on a typical whiteboard, right? <clears throat> so let's take a look at how we can actually get this into a, a, a position that we can work with it. So if I download it, <clears throat> Image is being downloaded down here, because often what we'll find is uh, you'll be in a, in a whiteboarding session together, and someone will take a picture of the whiteboard, and then um, uh, you know they, they email the picture just like this to everybody that, that was in the meeting, and um, uh, that's kind of the documentation that you have for that for that meeting. But let's take a look at a way to do it better. I have here my Microsoft Whiteboard, which is just an app that's available in Windows 10. It's a free app. <clears throat> I've opened up uh, just a blank canvas here. Now, what I'm going to do is right click, and right here I have the ability to add an image. Okay. So, I'm gonna add the image of the picture that I just took. All right, so that's still not anything that I can work with, but if I right click on it and click this little magic wand, it's gonna convert the picture into ink. And it takes just a minute to do this. All right, there we go. So now this is editable. So if I scroll over here, zoom in a little bit, so you can see if I go here and click on the mark or the eraser and I've got my surface pen. Oh, I'm using the wrong surface pen. There we go. 
that one. I can edit out the little pictures of the um, uh, the, the binder rings. And I can also say, how about let's circle this. That's important to know. Um, we can make some notes here. Good ideas, right? Whatever you want to do. And that's a little bit sloppy. But now I've got this in an editable format. I can also, um, if I need to, um, I can edit something. So let's say we don't want to have Office 365 in this image. So I can edit that, that uh, ink. Now I can go over here <clears throat> and I can send this to OneNote or I can post it in Teams, right? So um, I have the ability to, to move this data into one of the Teams where uh, we were working on uh, this project and, uh, and it'll be available for posterity. Um, you notice the, the, there's a couple things here, ink to shape and ink to table as well. Let's take a look at what those do. So I'm using my pen again. And if I just go like this, oops, get a pen and draw a triangle, it straightens it out. If I do a rough square, well, there we go. If I do a circle-ish thing and then connect the lines. Ah, it's not perfect, but uh, uh, the other one is the table. So if I do a table, and again, you have to get the uh, the exact shape right in order for it to understand it correctly. So you see that it caught the lines there, and then you can you know draw a table in there. So it, it, it it's not uh, perfect the way that I'm doing it, but uh, but you have that ability to to work with uh, the table. So that's uh, that, that's whiteboard, and that's definitely something that you can't do in Windows 7. <clears throat> now let's move on and take a look back in Excel. And in this case, what we're going to do is look at the um, the desktop version of Excel. So in this case, what I've got is a uh, a listing of the top 30 media markets in the U.S. And if you go through here, you notice that there's some misspellings, right? Michigan, I've got too many L's in Illinois. Um, but this is, uh, you know, may maybe I want to know more information about this uh, to see how I want to market to those areas. So what I can do is highlight this column where these are located. And then in the data tab, I go to geography, convert it to ge geography, now, what this is doing is actually uh, connecting with Bing and getting information from Bing about these um, these different uh, states. So you notice that, that it converted over to a card. Okay. So if I go in here and just highlight something, you notice I get this little uh, uh, thing to, to add a column. So let's click on and see what I get here. I have the ability to add in things like uh, what's the abbreviation? What's the area of the state? So let's add area. So that's how many square miles it is. I want to know what the capital of that uh, state is. I want to know what the median household income is. I want to know um, how many people are in the civilian labor force as a percentage in that state. So now I've got a whole lot more information that makes this uh, Excel spreadsheet much more valuable when I start thinking about a, a marketing campaign, a, a media marketing campaign. I can get some information about uh, the household income of the people uh, that, that I'm going to be marketing to. Um, I mean, there's just tons of information here. You know, the population change, um, how many are high school graduates, how many have bachelor's degree, all those kind of things that, uh, that a marketing person would, would really care about. So again, this is using artificial intelligence uh, to, to make this connection out to, uh, to Bing and, and populate some of this content for us. All right, um, let me think, was there anything else in here? Let's go on to PowerPoint. <clears throat> 
So PowerPoint is one of the fun ones. So probably some of you have seen this, uh, uh, some of the things I'm going to show you here in PowerPoint, but uh, but there's some there's some really cool stuff that can be done here. So the first thing is I'm looking at a, a slide deck, and uh, like with most organizations, uh, Contoso here has their own sort of branding, right? So so this blue uh, with some of the green and and the, the kind of dove gray. Um, that's their that's their branding of colors. Um, now what we have is this idea of design ideas. So very often people will create PowerPoint presentations and 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 they they know they want to add a little something to it, but they're not sure what. So uh, design is where you can uh, do that. So we go over here to design and design ideas, and it'll make some recommendations about different ways that you could lay out this slide in a different format. And notice that it keeps the same type of branding, right? You still have this blue, you still have the same picture, you're, you're positioning the picture differently, um, however you want to do it, right? So, so let's just say we want to change it uh, to this one, right? Okay, so that's, that's a little bit different than before. Um, it takes the same uh, approach to the agenda slide, so I can look at the agenda from a different perspective. Let's do it this way. Uh, nothing terribly fancy there. Here's where it gets really cool. So here I've got um, a key project, Lambda Healthcare. Um, it says it's a 680-bed hospital in Atlanta. They've done some road improvements and they've renovated existing facilities. Now, what the artificial intelligence is doing is looking through the words that are listed here and creating some recommendations for um, images that can be inserted into the, uh, the, the presentation. So for example, here, it's added a bed, it's added a car for road improvements, it's added a building for uh, renovating facilities, much more uh, interesting to look at than just the, the, the standard type that we saw there. Um, you look at this one, uh, you've got your new employees and then the names down there. So maybe you want to uh, highlight them a little bit more. So that's a little bit better from, from a graphics perspective. You see things uh, a little bit uh, you know, uh, more nicely presented. <clears throat> um, let's go over to a different presentation that I've got here that I think is also kind of interesting. And I'll show you one thing that can be done. That's uh, it's pretty slick. All right, so uh, we go through here. Um, we go to the design ideas. <clears throat> Again, this is kind of boring, not much to, to look at, but you can modify it, right? Make it look a little more professional. Here's one that's pretty cool, <clears throat> campaign milestones. So here we have some ideas about uh, what can be done on, on which dates. But because it's got dates listed here, we know that um, it, it involves some sort of a timeline. And so what we can do here is make it a timeline that makes it much more clear um, how things are going to progress and uh, what's taking place on which day. So some really, really cool stuff. And again, this is just using artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning type of things uh, to, to improve your presentation. Now, um, oh, I wanted to show you the, uh, the subtitles thing. So if you go to slideshow, here's the subtitle thing. Um, so that's where you click uh, always use subtitles, and then you have the ability to, um, as I did, um, I use the spoken language as English and the subtitle language was English, but you can use the subtitle language as something else. So you could make it Danish, for example, or Hebrew or Hindi or whatever. Uh, so it could translate your PowerPoint presentation as you're going along. This is actually something that within Microsoft we're required to do now. Um, if we have an audience of over 100, we have to have the subtitles uh, turned on in uh, the, the, the language that's being spoken. So um, that's uh, just for an, a, an accessibility requirement. Last thing I'm gonna show you here is in Word. <clears throat> actually, uh, let me show you one last thing in PowerPoint, and this is just for fun, right? 
So I'm just going to make another slide. And this is the, uh, the capability of inserting 3D models. So if I go to here, up to insert, and do 3D models from online source, it's going to find me. So, so the ones that had the little person running along the bottom, these are animated. So they're actually moving. Um, the rest of them are 3D models, but they're uh, stationary. So if I go here, I can find, uh, let's see, there, there's the one with the dinosaur. I love the dinosaur one, but there's also some pretty cool ones that have uh, some different images. So if we do the helicopter, it'll insert a 3D model into your PowerPoint presentation. And what's important to, to note here is that Windows 10 has a 3D modeler. So you can create your own 3D model. So if you're a manufacturing company or you, you have some sort of product that people are going to need to see from all different perspectives, you can create your own 3D model and then insert them into your PowerPoint presentation and you can have them moving um, however you want. Right. So here we've got the, uh, the helicopter and that's one perspective. But notice up here, I can change the perspective, right? So I can view it from up top, view it from behind, facing to the left, right? So you can change the perspective within the, uh, uh, within the, the model itself. And the, the movement of the, of the model is, is pretty cool too. All right, last thing is Word. And Word is also uh, a lot of fun to, to work with. So if we go up here to Word, um, this is dealing with the quadcopter. So you can see a, a, a use case for inserting that 3D model of the quadcopter into this, uh, this Word document. But, uh, but there's some things in here that, that are interesting. I mean, we, we've always had the ability to um, you know, do word correct and things like that. So, so, so there's nothing terribly interesting there. Um, but how about this? So we've got uh, this bunch of, uh, of, of Chinese that's been inserted into the paragraph uh, for whatever reason. Um, can we correct this? Let's go back to uh, the uh, review. And we have the ability to translate. So we translate that selection, and it will offer some options for, Jap oh, it's Japanese, not Chinese, um, Japanese to English. And I have the ability to insert that into the presentation, and now it's in English, right? Now, you might have to adjust a word or two here or, or, or the phrasing uh, so that it's exactly right, but, uh, but you got the idea. <clears throat> um, so, so one of the things that, that I find interesting is I tend to work in Word um, in, a, uh, in, a, in an area sort of like this, right? I'll be working on it. And, and to be honest, um, these other areas are a little bit uh, distracting. Now, if I go to View, I have the ability to click on Focus. And notice how much better it is to read when I turn on the Focus. So now it's super clear. I can see it exactly the way I want to see it, right? Uh, and it allows me to, to literally focus on uh, what I'm uh, interested in. Um, the last thing that I wanted to show you here in Word is the ability to take this Word document and convert it into its own web page. So obviously you can do this with web layout, right? So this is what, what it'll look like in a web layout, but that's not very pretty. So we go back to print layout, and if I go to file, click on transform, you've probably heard of Sway. What this is gonna do is convert this document into a Sway. So if I select uh, let's say this one and click transform. That may not be perfect, but uh, 
but you'll get the idea of what, what it's doing here. What it's done is it has opened up and created a sway in my Office 365 account, and it's converting that Word document into its own sway. And now, yeah, see, so, yeah, like the pictures need to be fixed a little bit. Um, but uh, but you get the idea of, of what, what could be done here. You could uh, just uh, that quickly um, create uh, documents and, uh, and, and upload them into Sway. So the, the, just, to, just to be clear, the reason why this doesn't uh, work correctly is um, the, the location of the pictures um, isn't accessible uh, to, to Sway in this particular instance. But if I, if I posted this, um, in Office 365, uh, this Word document into Office 365, then all that would be accessible, and it would render those those images correctly. So um, that's that's why that's happening. But it uh, very very quickly simplifies uh, the process of uh, moving uh, a Word document into a very nice uh, Sway presentation. So all this stuff is stuff that you could not do in Office 2010. Stuff that you couldn't do. In Windows 7, um, so you know, give it some consideration. Think about uh, how you can make the conversion over to uh, Office 365 Pro Plus, and uh, there's some some really cool features. I mean, we've only touched on uh, a few of the things. Oh, one more thing. Um, so very often uh, you'll have things in your clipboard uh, that you want to paste into uh, you know something later on. With uh, Windows 10, you have a clipboard that keeps a record of multiple uh, uh, things that you've copied. So if you click on the Windows key and V, notice I've got multiple things in my clipboard that I can then insert into um, whatever I want. Right? So, so I've, I've got more than just what is available in Control, uh, Control V. If I do Windows V, I have a whole bunch of things available to so uh, take advantage of Office 365 Pro Plus. Uh, really cool stuff in here. And uh, again, just scratching the surface. So uh, back to you, Sean. Great. Thank you so much, David. Um, and I think I fixed that echo issue. I'm switched over to headphones instead of my desk speakers. Um, so that was really great. And there are a lot of other features in Office 365. I just recently saw the uh, PowerPoint coach that's in there as well. Um, really impressive to see. AI leverage so simply where end users can take advantage of it. Uh, that bit about Excel, I remember spending about eight hours um, gathering that information at the library doing my uh, college homework back in the uh, back in the grand old 80s. Um, yeah. Let's see. I'm going to take back the screen here and cut off recording. Uh, we're about to go into the open question section. Um, so for those of you watching on YouTube or watching this on the blog, as always, this is a uh, benefit for our MSP and CSP customers here at Agile IT. This section is followed by an open Q&A period. Uh, but for those of you online, there are links to all of the resources in the comments below or on the blog you're reading right now. Thanks for joining. Give us a like and follow and have a great day.